just wanted to welcome everyone to a celebration of Adi K. Irani. We're so grateful to be here today. Um, we've celebrated Adi before, but he certainly deserves to be celebrated many, many times. So welcome. Um, I do have a little video that I would like to show of Adi, um, some photos of him, and then uh, we'll open up to Karen, who's got a wonderful bio, and then we'll open to everyone else who's had opportunities to see him if they have stories or just memories or whatever. So Che Baba, and uh, here's the video that we have today. Che Baba. You're the very sun behind a soon rising sun. Let us try to give our hearts to you. Every star reflects the glory of your smile. Let us ask only to If I knew I really loved you, I wouldn't mind the pain to wait a thousand years to, to touch your face, to feel your grace, to, to have a trace of your Love. You're the ancient one whose past is worshipped and remembered, and whose present is ignored and forgotten, and whose future advent is anticipated with great fervor and longing. If I knew I really loved you, I wouldn't mind the pain to wait a thousand years to, to touch your face. a river wide and deep, making full and rich the harvest that each at time's end will reap. The light of new day now is dawning as a heavenly flower rare. In its heart we are discerning your face, Baba, dear and fair. Beloved Meher Baba, bless us all, so that in the stress and strain of our daily life, 
and the fluctuations of our mind, we can learn to relax wholly and wholeheartedly and float on the ocean of your love and call for your breath of joy, your breeze of compassion, your wind of strength to flow into every fiber of our body, every corner of our mind, and every space in our heart to cleanse us of all impurity and to make us worthy of your love, of your obedience, of your service, and above all, your pleasure. And welcome to all the new people that have come since uh, we started to our celebration of Adi K. Rani today. Glad you're all here. And uh, I'd like to turn it over to Karen Talbot, who's got the um, some info and bio form about Adi K. So Jay Baba, Karen, if you want to. Jay Baba, and thank you for once again a spectacular video that we all enjoyed so much and that brought back so many memories of Dear Adi. I'm gonna start with something before the um, bio. And this is something I received since the last time. Some of you may know Cindy Gumpel Bowes. She came to Baba early on and she obviously wrote a letter to Adi, which we don't have a copy of her letter, but I have a copy of Adi's response. And it was written by Adi on April 8th 1968. Amanagar, India, Miss Cindy Gumpel, 47 Hicks Street, Brooklyn, New York, and um, you have the area zip code and USA. Dear Cindy, I received your letter of second and on eighth, went through it carefully. What you need in the first place is to snap off from all confusing thoughts of sanskaras, miracles, self-estimate of how much you suffer, and how much repetition of Baba's name you need to get over suffering, etc. In our relation to Baba, all our estimates of things and doings become speculative, transacting, and bargaining colored by a sense of success or defeat. Let there be an urge, a resolve, or even an attempt to be resigned to his will. Let this be natural, inspirational, or if self-directed, to have the easiness of joy or sorrow and with no regrets of a failure. One of the fundamentals of Baba advice is fearlessness. When Baba is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-love, and when you love him, why should there be fear and suffering? You may feel yourself weak and receptive to suffering. This should not come in your way at all. You do your part of loving him, remembering him, not mechanically, but in joy, ease, and comfort, and leave the rest to him. Don't bother about the result. Keep happy and cheerful. If you can't command yourself that Baba wants you to keep happy, remember, Baba always says, don't worry. So worry you should not and must not. And even if you do, don't worry why you worry. May he bless you. Yours brotherly, Adi K. Arani, secretary. And of course, it's signed Adi. So I just wanted to share that first. I'm going to start with a bio of Adi. 
was born on September 4th, 1903 in Amenagar, India. He passed on March 4th, 1980 in Andhra State, India. He's interred at Lower Maribad Men's Cemetery. His parents were Kaikushru Sarosh Irani and Gulmai Irani. His siblings, Rustam, Dali, and Paroja. Adi met Meher Baba in 1921 in Ahmednagar. He was 18 years old. He was one of Meher Baba's earliest Mandali members. Adi's mother, Gulmai, followed Upasni Maharaj, and she met Meher Baba through Upasni. In 1921, Adi fell seriously ill with a high fever. Maharaj treated Adi with quinine tablets. Baba would also visit Adi every day and inquire about his health give Adi water and walk back and forth with him. Adi recovered sooner than expected and never forgot the loving care that Baba expressed at the time to him. Adi thought my mother's or father's love is like a small pond when compared to Meher Baba's, which is like an ocean. It is better I seek the love of the ocean. Adi attended Deccan College in Pune. Baba told Adi to remember that the chief duty of your life is to think of me. Baba made an exception for study time. When Adi was in college, Baba told him not to talk to any of his friends. This was awkward for Adi. He majored in business, but after a while, he decided to leave college. This displeased his father, but as Adi said, there was nothing his father could do. At one time, Adi was engaged to be married. Baba had Adi the girl and her mother come to see him. Baba told the girl and her mother they would have unhappy lives. On occasion, Baba would ask Dr. Ghani and Adi what they were thinking after seeing an attractive girl at a darshan. They both replied, nothing, Baba. Adi asked Baba if he could whisper in his ear. Baba said no, but the next time this happened, Baba called Adi close and motioned for Adi to tell him in his ear. One day, Baba walked alone with Adi behind the house where Baba sat. There he asked Adi, do you know who I am? Adi replied, I know you are the chief disciple of Upasni Maharaj. More than that, I do not know. Baba said, I will not tell you who I am today, but you will definitely come to know and will see that your name is known all over the world. Your future has deep significance in my work. With my love and your obedience of my instructions, you will prove to be a fit instrument for my work. Later, Baba added, I will make you like Vivekananda. Adi was overcome with joy and began thinking of joining Baba permanently. Adi was with Meher Baba at Manzil Imim and also prior to that at the hut Baba stayed in in Pune. Korshid recalled an incident that took place in the early 1920s in Manzil Imim Ashram in Bombay when Baba first planted in Adi the seed of the ability to communicate his message to the public. One afternoon, Baba called Adi and asked him, will you stay with me for your whole life? Adi answered, yes, Baba. Baba continued, when I call you, will you come with me for begging, Biksha. Adi again answered, yes, Baba. Baba then said, will you speak for me as Vivekananda did for Ramakrishna? If so, I will give you my power to speak for me, just as Ramakrishna gave Vivekananda his power to speak for him. Will you do this for me? Adi again said, yes, Baba. Baba said, remember this. 
Adi accompanied Meher Baba to the Devonshire retreat in 1932 on Baba's first visit to the West. During Meher Baba's visit to California in December 1934 through January 1935, Adi was in Hollywood with Meher Baba. When Baba's secretary Chanji passed away in 1944, Adi became Meher Baba's secretary. Adi also drove, drove for Baba and was his correspondent. Adi was adept at reading Baba's alphabet board. From a small outline, Adi could communicate Baba's thoughts. Before becoming a speaker for Meher Baba, Adi wrote and published Messages of Meher Baba in the East and West, compiled in 1945 by Adi. And who is Meher Baba? Just 100 pages. In December 1947, Baba had Adi come to Pimple Gown or Meriza daily. He was always called to drive one of the cars whenever Baba took the women to the Sarosh Cinema. In January 1948, Adi picked up Ivy Deuce at the Pune Railway Station. In 1949, he joined Meher Baba and the companions on the new life. He was sent back to take care of details for Meher Baba. On March 14, 1952, Adi and his mother Golmai met Baba at Merizad. Baba instructed Adi to have Sarosh continue to pay for the safety deposit box at the Central Bank of India in Bombay, where Baba had kept the handwritten manuscript of the book he had written at Meribat in 1925 to 1926. So that's where the book was at that time. Adi accompanied Meher Baba on his first visit to the U.S. in 1952 with Nilu, Meherji, and Sarosh. Baba planned a 10-day stay at Me Meher Mount in June 1952. When the accident occurred and news reached Meher Mount, five of his men, Mandali, had already arrived at Meher Mount awaiting his arrival, including Adi. Adi, Meherji, Dr. Nilu, Dr. Duncan, and Gustaji spent the night at Meher Mount and then drove to Prague the very next morning. In July 1956, he traveled again with Meher Baba to the West for Baba's visit there. He accompanied Meher Baba to the Longchamps Hotel in New York on July 22nd, 1956. Adi was shy to speak extemporaneously. In 1956, two years after Baba gave up the alphabet board, Baba asked Adi to act as his representative as a press conference. Adi was perfect. Adi visited Southern California for three days with Meher Baba, July 31st to August 2nd, 1956. The first two days were spent in Hollywood. The third full day was spent at Meher Mount. So he had spent quite some time as well with Agnes Barron. Adi visited Ivy Deuce's home in Washington, D.C. In 1968, he sent out the life circulars of Meher Baba, other books, oh, we talked about that. He wrote for the Meher Baba journals, The Awakener and The Glow. When Baba dropped his body on January 31st, 1969, Adi made the necessary phone calls. After 1969, Adi made several speaking tours in the U.S. and in India. He came to the U.S. in 1970. In 1970, Adi and Meherji arrived at the Meher Center. Later, they traveled to Southern California. They spent one day with Agnes at Meher Mount in Santa Barbara. So more time with Agnes Barron. Adi reminisced with Agnes Barron about Baba's 1956 visit to Meher Mount. 
1976 and in 1977, Adi visited the U.S. again. He was the speaker at the L.A. Sahavas. He also came to the U.S. in 1979. I heard Adi speak in Myrtle Beach, and I also had an interview with Adi there in 1979. Adi spoke weekly at the Amnagar Meher Baba Center, which many of us attended during our visits to India in the 1970s. Conviction to Meher Baba was always a major and significant theme. We heard of Hafez, Jigar, and Kabir. During Adi's visits to the West, he gave personal interviews to Baba lovers and people drawn to Meher Baba and who was by his side, but always Jack Small. In 1985, Adi compiled Baba's messages and sayings in a book titled, Just to Love Him. Next to Baba's love, Adi said he personally felt Baba's love most when serving as a channel for communication of his love and truth to others. Baba said about Adi, you all know about him, nothing more to be said about him. He has been with me for the last 30 years. What a privilege it was for all of us to meet Adi. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Thank you, Karen. That was great. I forgot. I was thinking of Sarosh being um, coming only once to the United States, that Adi was there many times. I saw him also, I think, in 76 in uh, Miami, which was wonderful. So anyway, um, yeah, he actually came to a yoga center in Coconut Grove and uh, we were supposed to sing for him betty ryan myself and I'm trying to think of the woman's name another woman um and they both chickened out at the end so there i was by myself with my little guitar just trying my heart you know singing my heart out and uh, he appreciated it it was it was amazing so anyway, um, I'd like to open it up then. If anyone would like to speak and uh, relay any stories about Adi, we're here to hear them. Any memories, just raise your hand. Um, we do that by raising our hand digitally. Uh, I can look on the screen because there's only a few of us here. So Karen, go ahead. Okay, since I'm not muted at this time. Um, I just wanted to share a few few things. In 1980, when um, Adi went down to Andhra State to talk about Meher Baba, the two Westerners that accompanied him were Robert Dreyfus and Steve Barry. And I think the last time we did this, I think at one of the times Steve spoke about the, what occurred. So I'm going to tell a little bit, but I think Steve's version, who is with him, is obviously the clearest um, and most accurate. He had, Adi had a heart attack, and there they were. He passed away, and there they were in Andhra State. And they had to drive back with him to the trust office, Marizad, wherever. And, and, and again, Steve would know. And Eric told them that they had to drive back really quickly because if for any reason, and carefully, if for any reason a police, they were stopped and they noted a dead person in their car, there could be very serious consequences because they were young male Westerners. So I believe they propped Adi up and it was not a quick trip to come back from Adra State to Marizat. And they, I guess they got ice, whatever, but they in fact drove him back. And then, of course, he was interred and is buried at the men's cemetery. So I wanted to share that if anyone else has more info on that. Also, I always remember Jack Small and the role Jack played. He so wanted to be with Adi. And obviously, that was his karma. Um, 
And um, I think he said if Adi needed to come to the West or wanted to come to the West, he would pay all expenses, but must be accompanying Adi. And he did and cared for Adi. I did meet Adi in at this, I met him, of course, in India. He's this spectacularly handsome man in white, the beautiful white shawl, who took such great care of all of us. I remember one time Dan Ladinsky and I wanted to extend our stays, and this would have been in 1978. And Adi brought us to the police station. I remember sitting in, like they had little desks there, Dan Ladinsky and I. And by the time we left, you know, Adi, worked his magic and we, we had our visas extended. In 1979, I was living at that time in Myrtle Beach when Adi came with Jack and they stayed at the um, farm shed and they were giving interviews out. So I asked for an interview and I was single at the time, but Alan was planning to come across country from, and he was there actually came, yeah, to Adi's talks. And then we were gonna drive back across the country and I would move to California, to the Bay Area. And so I wanted to ask Adi's advice, what he thought, should I go or not? So Adi, when he started the interview, he said, are you happy? And then his next question, are you married or not married? And then I asked about Alan and he said, what does he do? I said, well, he's in law school. And he said, and I said, he had a business. And he said, who's paying? Is his father paying for this? I said, no, he had a, a store, Holy Foods, and he used the profits to pay for law school. At which point, Adi said, go, you must go. And I followed Adi's advice. And 42 years later, we're still married. And Jay Baba, that's it. <laughs> So glad, so glad. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful, Karen. What a beautiful connection. Um, Elizabeth is asking about a, a photo of Jack Small, and I pulled one up, so I thought I'd just share it. Let's see if I can do this. God bless your little soul, Ruby. There he is. There's um, Jack. Let me bring it up a little bit. Well, it didn't help any. Let's go back here. Here he is, honey. It's an early photo, or, or you know, he was. I was trying bit. to see him next to Adi, some of the ones you showed, but I, I don't know him. I didn't recognize him, nor a lot of those other women who were in some of those photos, like the one at, when they were having um, dinner or something with Baba. It looked like in the dining room at Mayer Center. Jack was in the back. He was with his um, face. Uh, facing ba uh, back to Baba's picture, and Rosalie was there. Rosalie, you were there with uh, Jack, with um, Adi also. Yeah, there's also uh, Kathy Haas is in the photo. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, I would be. Uh, let's see if I could. I don't know if I can do that. I probably can, but let me see. Here we go. Let's see what we. Can I'm sorry, do. I just don't recognize a lot of the people. Well, yeah, I understand. Um, I kind of don't know a lot of them either. I think this is this is such an exquisite photo right there. But anyway, um, who was that lady? I don't Elizabeth. know, but oh, um, oh, I can't think of her name now. There's Kathy Riley, Kathy Haas Riley. Oh, right. Uh huh. And is this she Jack? Like yes, that's Jack. Jack. That's Jack. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, it's so hard to. Phyllis. Phyllis. You, Phyllis Phyllis Fredericks is in the lower left hand Here? corner. Yeah. Okay. Good. And, and another picture there is Rosalie. Where's Rosalie? Another picture before that. Before oh, that, there's Rosalie. That's going to make me. Kat, Kathy reminds me of um, Her, um, Tina. Tina. Mm -hmm. Is that Carrie Benjamin? Is that? No, no, that's not Carrie no. Benjamin. Carrie no, Benjamin. I'm thinking of yeah, Enid, Enid Kerf. 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 Enid it Kerf. Enid Kerf. Kerf. And it's in New York City at Longchamp's restaurant in 1956. Hey. And that's Meher G to, to Adi's left. And of course, they're both, to, I'm sorry, to Adi's right. And they're both, to, everyone's to the right of Baba. No, yeah. that's no, not Meher G. That's Dr. Nilo. Dr. Nilo. 
That is oh, I'm sorry, Nilo. it's Dr. Neil. Doug, you're right, Dr. Nilu. And who did you say the lady was? Who was the lady? It's Enid uh, Cor Corfu. Cor oh, okay. Corf, yeah. So can you go to the picture where Rosalie is? Also, she's in oh, the back geez. of. Uh... All right, I'm not sure where Rosalie is, but I'll continue. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we got to go back a bit. Let me see. Here. Da -da 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 -da. And Judy and uh, wow, that is great. Hi, Rosalie and, yeah. and John and um, uh, the mother of Jack Small. Virginia. Yes, yeah. Virginia. Yeah. Here. Can you go through them from left to right so we know? All right, who's this? Talking? That's all guy. That's John I'm Connor. I think he's John, John Connor. Connor. He was working with a Bauji. That's John Judy, Connor. One. Hold mean? on, one one at a time. You say it's John Connor. On the left, I think yeah. it's yeah. I think it's John Connor, and then okay. there's Judy, Judy, Here. Um, Judy Stevens, yeah, Judy and then Stevens. Jack Small, Jack Small, and then and our uh, Rosalie, Abby, and Adi. then Rosalie, yes, and then Jack Small's mother, um, Virginia Small, Virginia. Virginia. That's right, Virginia Small. They're Gosh. all together with Mickey Mouse, <laughs> and then there's Mickey. <laughs> You guys bring back <laughs> such memories. <laughs> so is that in California, I guess, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. In LA. Mm. Wow. Yeah. What a crew, huh? Yeah, Jack. Yeah, um, <laughs> John Connor still has the same smile. That interesting little his mouth is is exactly the same, of course. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. I've never seen a picture of him that young. <laughs> well, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Lucy. you're welcome. <clears throat> and let's see. Go back. Here we go. All right. Oh, well, yeah. I just remember um, being at the Stevens house. Um, Audie would come there in the evenings and speak. And um, after having time with him during the day, uh, maybe at lunch or something, and then we'd all be at the Stevens house. It was a big celebration of days worth. I mean, he, as I said, he came to this yoga center and spoke that afternoon for the people at Coconut Grove, whoever wandered in. Um, and then he would speak at, at the Stevens house that night. And they, he would sit in the living room and would all sit on the floor and face him. And I remember one night um, he was talking about something, you know, I think it was a bit esoteric for me anyway, since Scaras or something, I don't know. And uh, in came Scott McCabe. And Scott said, oh, Audie, Audie, uh, what about da da da? And he was late. And Audie said, well, I've already talked about that. Better luck next life. <laughs> and I had never heard that before. I just thought that was the greatest thing. Better luck next life. You know, you were late, you missed it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. He was just such a fun person. And then after he'd talk, then he'd get out the harmonium and he'd start to play and sing these guzzles. And at that point, I was so exhausted from just this intense fire of being near Baba's Mondali for this amount of time. I mean, I was like a little ember just burnt up in his love. And then, but there would be Adi just singing his heart out from just this intense place. And I would have to leave. I mean, he would go on until after midnight and people would hang on, you know, that were the older ones, I guess, were used to it. And they could stay and listen and not not just fall over as I was about to do. So anyway, he just brought so much of Baba. He was such a lion. He just brought that gorgeous, beautiful, intense love and fire of the beloved. How fortunate. I do remember that. Ruthie, do you know if anybody taped him at all while he was singing there? Oh, gosh, you know, I think this question has come up, and I think I asked Richie Bloom about it. And um, we couldn't really 
think or find a, a source to find those um, that music that he brought. I don't. I think if anybody recorded it, Cheryl, it was early enough that what they did was they used like a tape recorder. I'm sure. Oh yeah. But you know I mean, I mean? those things are still. If somebody archivally could capture them, some of that. Because I'm all the times I was with Audi, I missed every single time he ever played the harmonium, and I cannot believe it. So it's one of the things on my radar to ask about. Oh, so <laughs> well, cool. Pra Prakash Darum has knows how to access because he sent me one of his tape singing because I had never heard Audi sing. He, they didn't allow him to sing in California uh, because I think he already started to have heart trouble. I never, I never remember him singing. I would remember that. Oh yeah, yeah. But anyway, Prakash uh, knows how to get a tape where he's singing. I don't know where he's singing. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Thank you, Rosalie. Yeah. Yeah. Great source, Rosalie. Thank you, honey. Yeah, he used to sing also at Amartiti in the one year where he was still singing. It was in the middle of the night sometime. And I, like you, Ruthie, just couldn't keep hanging on. I mean, I must have been up already for 20 hours and I had to go down the hill to one of the huge tents in Lower Maribad to go to sleep. All the women were in one tent and all the men, well, I'm sure there were others scattered around. But I mean, a huge number of us, this was the 1978 Amartiti, a huge number of us women of, met from everywhere, India, United States, Europe, were all on the floor on mats. They, I don't remember, I guess they gave us, I think I had my own sheets, but they gave us a blanket and a very, very, very hard pillow. So I slept on some of my other clothes for a pillow, but I had to flake out and I missed Adi singing on the mandap opposite from the samadhi. Um, and I will always regret that. <laughs> but he sang, he played the harmonium that year. And people said, of course, it was always magical to hear him. That's what I kept hearing. So yeah. So that was one little vignette. Um, but yeah, and I had my shoes stolen. For, so from there on out, somebody came while I was sleeping and took my Western shoes. So from then on, instead of my Bible or my gold or whatever under my pillow, I put my shoes under my pillow. <laughs> Wise move. <laughs> well, I was sleeping. Otherwise, they were on my feet during the day. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> and I didn't have any gold either, but you know what I mean, my money. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, those days in India. Yeah. And you know, that beautiful prayer that we heard, he composed that in the trip to Myrtle Beach, which was in, I remember what Karen said, either 78 or 79, because I saw him in 77 in New York City. And then I went down to the center for the second time in 79 because Audi, whatever it was, it's end of 78 or it must have been whatever it was. That's where Audi composed that beautiful prayer. And he, the, for, I heard him read it out himself. And people have slightly changed words, which I don't know why they should, because they shouldn't. That prayer that was read isn't exactly what he wrote, but he read it out at the on sitting at the meeting place up on the stage in one of the meetings and the reason i know it's not the same is because i went up to him afterwards and i and i said adi can i have a copy of that prayer please and he just like went ask jack small so later that evening before they left for the farm shed to, which is where adi was staying i asked jack and the next day or the day after he gave me a copy of adi's prayer and he told me, Jack told me at the time that Adi had written it because so many people had come to Adi for private interviews with so many problems and anguish and angst. Mm -hmm. and that's how that prayer emerged. That beautiful prayer. Mm -hmm. Beloved, may her Baba bless us all so that in the stress and strain of our daily lives and the fluctuations of our minds, we may learn to relax wholly and wholeheartedly. I know the whole thing, but I won't repeat it. Now. Oh no, go ahead from there. Oh, I I, yeah, I was gonna say, please, please say it. Holy, yeah. holy, we may learn, I may start to cry. We may learn to relax wholly and wholeheartedly. Um, I'm gonna have to wait a minute. And float. 
and float on the ocean of your love and call for your breath of joy, your breeze of compassion and your wind of strength. This is how Adi first wrote it, to inundate and flood every fiber of our bodies, every corner of our minds and every space of our hearts to cleanse us of all impurities and make us worthy of your love, your obedience, your service, and above all, your pleasure. Hey, Baba and Cheryl, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Gosh, if I had known you could read like that, I would have called you to put that on the back of the video. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That was just beautiful, though. So much from the heart. Thank you. The, the next time it, he, someone took out in a, the word inundate and just put flood, but Adi had both the words inundate and flood, and then now this reader said flow. Um, and that's okay. It means the same thing, but it it is just not his words, so... I'm kind of like Don Stevens with Baba's words, don't change a single thing. <laughs> it's like... I'm with you, Cheryl. That was beautiful. I think inundate is the word. Thank you. Yeah. And I have, I'll, I'll have this, just share it right now since I'm talking a little, a little vignette of meeting Adi in 1977 in New York City. He was staying with a Baba lover who, um, on the 23rd floor, I believe it was, of a tall apartment building overlooking the Hudson River. And it was this very long, very slow elevator ride up 23 flights. Um, and I had the last interview that Adi was giving in this trip. I just happened to get the last interview before lunch. So I got a longer time is what ended up happening. And Jack Small came twice to tell Adi that it was lunchtime and that he needed to end this interview. And Adi turned to him and said, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> and with the last, so the reason I'm mentioning this at all is that the very last thing that Adi said to me was you're young, you're strong, you're healthy, work hard, make money, Come to India, it will change your life. Because I had told Adi, he said, why didn't you come to uh, India with your brother the year before? And I said, because I did, partly, I only answered partly. Part of it, because I wasn't interested really in Baba yet, but um, I also didn't have the money. So that's why he said that to me. It was like this strong, you know, it, you're young, you're strong, you're healthy, work hard, make money, come to India, <laughs> change your life. And I came down from that interview, I still remember the very long elevator ride down, hoping the elevator wouldn't stop in between floors. <laughs> I was scared about that. I wasn't scared of elevators, but this one I, I was. And I walked across the West Side Highway and sat on the piers, the broken down piers right on the Hudson River with the river flowing by. And I just sat there and all of a sudden I just, this is the words in my head were because I'd heard the phrase so long for so, so many times from the New York Baba lovers. All of a sudden it just came to me silently in my mind, I've come to Baba. Mm -hmm. And I thought I'm gonna go to India in about a year and that's exactly what I did. This was August and I went the following October. So a little bit more than a year. End of October. I'm sorry, end of November. No, end of October, because I arrived November 1st of 1978. Such a beautiful story. Yeah, it was. To meet Adi was just phenomenal. I mean, he just was, you know, just the power, it's quiet power. And he could get really angry with people and annoyed and tell them off, but he never ever once did that with me and all the times I was with him for which I was very grateful. <laughs> but I was very, I, I just loved him so much that I, there was very, I was very careful not to do anything that would annoy him. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah. I wanted to share a couple of things. So, uh, 
when, as I was in that picture, because Adi stayed at the house where I was living. Um, and um, he was very avant-garde about healing. You know, I, I remember him, uh, um, I don't know, if, I'm sure people know Raelia, the name Raelia. Well, she had a daughter. Uh, Nanda and Nanda was like a gourmet cook and she was cooking for Adi but uh, she wore contacts and she couldn't see without them so Adi was giving her this uh, exercise to do to improve her vision so he was very uh, uh, you know he was um, he was not so uh, harsh medicine, you know, and that particular um, exercise is phenomenal. And I ended up trying it. I don't know if Nanda ever did, but also he was into homeopathy. And, um, and he also, uh, <laughs> I didn't hear this directly from him, but he had arthritis, his hands were very arthritic, and he actually would drink his urine and that was good for some kind of control over the arthritis. And he went to see um, this doctor that I would go to, Dr. Merwick, that had been Jean, Jean Adriel's doctor, I guess I should be saying. Um, and um, he was very into, someone used to juice him, uh, bring him juices and juice for him. Uh, he loved children, actually. He had this incredibly sweet side that I saw uh, being around him in 76. There was a wonderful little boy and uh, I imagine he's still around. His name was Baba Das. I never got the last name. And his mother was one of the people that worked in the compound there. And um, Baba Luna, Adi loved this little boy. And uh, I under I heard from people that he would actually help people who had children that, you know, he understood, you know, he was actually a very fatherly and a very sweet way of concern about children. And, um, and one time, uh, I, you know, I would go to his God Speaks class because, you know, in 76, you could only stay at Maribod and you had to leave. You, you went on Monday and then you left on Friday. And then we'd go and Adi would be speaking. And I wasn't really interested in that, the God Speaks, but Adi would share the fire and the, uh, the love fire of these guzzles. And it was just... Uh, such an experience, you know, just to, and that's what got me loving these guzzles because it was like, you know, he, he knew God speaks whatever inside and out, but then it would bring up, you know, some line from a guzzle and he'd say it in the language and with such fire, it's just, uh, all I could think is fire. But one day, Little Baba Das, this little boy, he was one of these little boys where you would pinch his cheeks because it looks like moon, very pinchable cheeks. And Baba Das wanders in to the meeting place. I guess it was a Nagar Baba meeting place there. And Adi was in the middle of one of these guzzles, and you know, <laughs> all I remember is his incredible eyebrows and this fire coming out of him. And he went from this fire and then Baba Das comes in. Baba Das is wearing a ski cap and a, a big ski sweater, but he's naked from the waist down. And Adi went from this fire to this, he looked like Baba Das, you know, all this just that sweetness of appreciation of the soul. Anyway, uh, I, I, uh, I, I also find it kind of interesting that 
because I always kind of, I'm always interested how many, there's such a, a, a amount of women here about Adi and, and uh, it's interesting, very few men. I, I find that just very noticeable. Anyway, I, I, uh, I didn't hear him sing, but uh, thanks to Prakash, I, I have. And uh, also his sense of humor. If he thought something was funny, you just have to enjoy this deep chuckle, chuckle. You know, he would just, you know, it was rather volcanic. You know, it was like, oh, that, has, that must be funny, you know. And um, anyway, I always was amazed at the questions that during the God Speaks, I couldn't wait for a guzzle line, you know. Anyway, that's my share. Jay Baba. <laughs> Jay Baba's sweet and, and that And that, that prayer uh, helped me many a time. And uh, I love the part, float on your ocean of love. Because if you don't let go to be able to float, you do sink. You sink. So it's like you have to totally release to Baba, depend on Baba. So uh, I love that prayer. And also, I got it. Uh, Adi says, give her a copy. Yeah. So I got a copy. <laughs> Say, Baba. <laughs> Baba. Thank you, Rosalie. And thank Elizabeth. you, Baba. Thank you, Baba. So, you know, um, Adi was the first Mondali member I ever met. And it took years before I actually became uh, recognizably a Baba lover. <laughs> so uh, he came to American University, as Karen said, I think in November 1979, and he was speaking to this great big hall, and I had heard about Baba off and on from my very good lifetime friend, Melanie Davis, <laughs> who is my Baba link. She's my Baba mother, and Ruthie's my Baba grandmother. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, Adi was coming, and I was really skeptical you know I'm thinking what is this thing you know it's like is it a cult or what is it so you have to understand my mindset and uh so but I, but Melanie very intelligent woman you know good friend and I thought she's going and I thought yeah I'd be very interested and so I went and um I really have no earthly idea what he talked about you know I can't remember any content <laughs> I just remembered the ridiculous question I asked later, which maybe wasn't so ridiculous after listening to Karen's story. I asked him of all things, will I get married? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that was my mindset. Will I get married? And Adi said, yes, but I never have. <laughs> so I don't know what happened. Karen, you got lucky and I didn't. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it took till 1985 before I really started, uh, I couldn't get Bob off my mind. I couldn't get a newsletter and Melanie was mad at me. And eventually she sent me something in the very same day she sent me something. I found out there was a meeting that very night at Ned Foote's. And I went there and Ned eventually gave me his three volume discourses, which is now falling apart. And, um, and it was not soon after that, I think it was May of that year, I did go to the center for the first time. And um, so I, I, everything started happening um, with the discussions with Melanie, but seeing Adi, but I had no idea of the significance of that. And it's only in the past year during all these Zoom meetings, and I've listened to so many, um, talks and videos and things that I realized how many tangential contacts I had with different Mondali members and I'm shocked. It's like, uh, you know, Baba surrounds you and you don't even know it. And then he's, it's like a net and then he just kind of draws you in. And um, so for me, Adi is very important. Um, 
why I got to meet him, I have no earthly idea. It, but um, I do remember he was a very handsome man. I do believe he spoke very well. I, you know, I had a very, very positive impression of him. So I'm, I was interested to hear what people said about him today, because I wanted to, I, you know, I want to know who is this man, Adi K. Arani? And I guess he was, is, is it correct that he was Baba's cousin? Is that the relationship with Baba? No, what was the relationship? Was there a, a um, not, not familial relationship, just- uh, He was uh, Gulmai's son, Gulmai's son. And Gulmai and her, um, her um, husband were the ones who gave Meraba to us all, to Baba and to us all. Huh. Gulmai was uh, Baba's spiritual mother. She yeah. got to meet Baba in, in Upasni Maharaj's uh, uh, ashram and uh, that's where Adi got to meet him too, and that's how he got uh, to be knowing him. Yeah, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And the painting behind me is from Lori Bloom, as you, some people wanted to know. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. You guys can see it, but it's Bob on the, on the white, well, I'll say white horse, but it's really a donkey. <laughs> well, he, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to add, too, that Baba had said that he was, Adi had been his wife when he was Shivaji. Oh, wow. wow. And which is funny because when Gulmai was speaking of, of marrying uh, Adi off, Baba says, no, he's his mine. <laughs> The very so I'm, just the, I'm just holding it up so you guys can see the painting better. Maybe yeah. noise. Okay. Thank you, honey. That was beautiful. May I ask, please, uh, Ken, to go over, uh, tell who Adi's siblings were again, please, and a little bit about Golmai. Adi's sibling was uh, Rustum Murani. Rustum was uh, married to uh, Mera's sister, Trainee. And um, and they had uh, also two sisters. I think Karen said Piroja. I don't know her, but Dolly. Dolly was very close to Baba. Oh, Baba said Dolly, to Gul. Excuse me. Dolly. Is is Dolly is Dolly still living? No, no. She. I think she passed away very early, and she was very reclusive. And um, she was with Mera and Koshed at the beginning very, very close. And uh, Baba said to Gulmai, I want two of your children. One is Adi and one is Dolly. I thought once before I thought it was Rustum, but it wasn't Rustum. And it was Dolly and Adi that he said are his. And um, of course, um, um, Gulmai said yes. And so they belong to him. And uh, I think Dolly passed away. Maybe Karen knows when. No, she was, I think uh, there was a time then she was very reclusive and she didn't even want to go out when Baba came to Kushu quarters. And Adi lived in Kushu quarters, which was the house of, the, of Gulma and her husband and the whole family. The whole family lived there. She was Sarosha, father and mother. And um, it was like a compound of uh, the whole family, like the Indians live in compounds with the whole family, with the brothers and sisters and their own families. So that is why uh, Adi used to stay in, in um, Koshu quarter all the time. And, and Koshed is a um, cousin. Koshed is a cousin of uh, Adi. And that's why she got to live there. What she, that's why she came back from Bombay after her mother passed away, or maybe her mother came with her. And that's why she lived there in the Koshu quarters all the time. L little little Koshed or big Koshed? Uh, Korshed, um, Korshed Irani. No, Not little the, or big. I don't know the difference, but little or big. One, one of them is Korshed, one of them is the wife of uh, Jal, Jal, Baba's brother. Korshed, one of them is the wife of Jal's, uh, of not Jal's brother, for Baba's brother, the older one, Jamshed, that passed away. So Baba uh, took care of his wife 
after that, and she's one of the Koshids. The other Koshid is a Koshid that we know that is buried up in the Meribah. Who is a cousin of uh, Adi? Thank you. Here, Karen. Karen, yeah, you wanted to say. There are also there's so many intermarriages in, in these families, and Suro Shirani was actually the cousin of Adi and Rustam. Oh, and perfect. Sarosh, yeah, perfect. and Sarosh was living. Sarosh's father was living in the quarters there and he was against Baba and he was the one who was harassing Gulmai all the time. He was, the, um, he was against uh, Baba and so um, he was the elder brother and the elder brother in the family, in the Indian family, the elder brother is like the one who decides for the family. So when everyone went to Baba, his sons went to Baba and <laughs> His granddaughter married Adi, Adi Jr. Um, Sarosha's father, um, granddaughter, that is uh, Franey, married Adi Jr. And so they were all <laughs> sort of um, mixed together, these families, and they all, most of them came to Baba. Mm -hmm. That, tr that uh, family tree is terrific. Maybe uh, we could just look at it. Somebody can read it because the names are kind of small. All right. Well, this shows, <clears throat> excuse me, Golmai and her husband, Sarosh. And then there's Adi, Rustam, Dali, and Paroja. Just four. So these are the children of Golmai, Adi and his sister and two, uh, two sisters and a brother. And um, <clears throat> I'm not as good reading all the Indian names. Does anybody else want to uh, speak to this chart? Well, so, uh, let's see on the left, it's Sarosh. Uh, I can't see it's too little. Uh, she, Sha, Shaiva, Shaiva Xirani and Piroja. So then there comes Gulnar and Keiku Shu, Shuru. And then Keiku Shu, Adi, Adir Shair Irani, Elder Keiku Shu. Um, Sarosh. Yeah, so he is the father of um, Sarosh. We see Sarosh and Home and Mota and Gulnar, right? Right. Then, then his. Younger brother is Keiku Shu. They were both Keiku Shu, you see. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the elder brother was Keiku Shu, uh, um, Adashar Irani, and Keiku Shu uh, Hansahed, and Gulmai. So um, he's the younger brother, and they all lived in the same Kushu quarters. So um, Rustam uh, married uh, Freni. You see, he's married Freni, who's uh, beneath him. And she is the daughter, she is the daughter, she's the elder sister of, um, of um, Hera, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and she is the mother of Meru, you see? Mm -hmm. She's the mother of Meru who came to Merabad and was uh, with Baba. So, let's see if there's anything to, down here yeah. that this is the same. Daulat, yeah, Daulat. Mm -hmm. Daulat Sunamasino Gune. No, no, that's too much. Uh huh. So, <laughs> okay. So, then, uh, yeah. So Is they that... all lived in the same quarters. And if you remember the beginning <clears throat> of the story, when Gunai wanted Baba to come to Marazad, to Marabad, um, and the first time he came, he came for the marriage of Rustum and uh, Freini. And actually he is, I think he is the one who instigated the marriage. So, um, so he came uh, to the marriage because Rustum did not want to get married, but Baba gave him an order to get married. So that's why he got married. And then all the guests that came were against, um, many of them were against Baba because they were Parsis and they were against the, the fact that he was um, being a, a perfect master and saying that he was a perfect master and all that. 
and they talked badly about it, so badly about him. So Adi came to him because he was staying there and he told him that they, what they're saying. So Baba, that is when we all know that Baba picked up and left. And then all the Mandali rushed after him. And that was the first time that he went to the railway station, but he didn't go out to the railway. He went left to Marabad. And that was the first time that he sat under the very neem tree and near the, um, near the well there. So that was the first time that Baba sat in Marabad when he came for Rustum and Gulmai's and Fraini's um, marriage. Was that in Ahmed Nagar? I mean, not Ahmed Nagar. Was that in, yeah, was it in Ahmed Nagar that the marriage took place or what, did it take place in Arangal? Yeah. No, no, it took place in Ahmed Nagar and in, in, in all the preparations were done in uh, Pusho quarters in another place that they were having a new house there, I think, and they prepared everything there. Yeah. And so they had a marriage in, in, uh, in, I think, in the Agiari, if I'm not mistaken. Now, Melly, does that, does that answer or help to understand? Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for asking. It was a great question. <clears throat> and I would ask you, uh, when you met Adi, was there anything special that you'd like to bring, or is it something that's personal you're keeping? Well, it's a little personal, but I I'll tell you anyway. Okay. I was very new to Baba, and I sort of came upon it by accident, in fact, but there are no accidents, of course. Um, I had ridden with you to the center. I was just looking to get away from a graduate program that, that I didn't like. And suddenly you and your friends um, began to talk once we arrived, the center was closed. Anyway, began to talk about um, all sorts of interesting things that I had never he heard about before, sanskaras and past lives, and I'm not sure what else. But anyway, you asked uh, when the center opened if I wanted to come see the center. I was really looking for a place on the beach just to think about um, what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And I said, oh, no, that's not for me, as interesting as it was. But you said, you can always leave. And so anyway, long story short, I went with you, and I really never left the center. <laughs> but anyway, um, when I met him, a lot of esoteric things were happening to me. Like I was, if I would say Mirabha's name, the room would light up. Um, I walked along the beach, and nothing looked like what it really was. The sands just sparkled. Um, Etc. Anyway, um, when I met him, there was a huge connection, and uh, I had no idea what was going on. And all I knew is that I was compelled to stand on the bridge when he was in the farm shed, and I stood there for out uh, an hour or more, and it was as though I was attempting to compel him to come down. And it was just amazing. I had no idea what I was doing or what the attraction was or what the connection was. And anyway, when I eventually met him, he grabbed me and held me so tight, it was like a bear hug. And, uh, and he whipped out a picture of his mother. And I really, he asked me a couple questions, only two maybe, and I can't exactly remember what they were. But anyway, I just had a fabulous connection with him, never knowing exactly what it was. Years later, I asked Jack Small if he did this to people. He said, Jack Small said he never did that to anyone. <laughs> so anyway, that was like an interesting experience. I kind of tried to figure out who I might have been, you know, in the, I thought, well, but I never really did. You know, I never really figured it out. It's just as well, I'm sure. Um, we have had many, many, many lives and we have been many, we have many different associations. I asked a, um, uh, uh, a psychic once who I was, and she said, you have been many things to um, Adi Kiarani. So, and he to you. So, you know, it was just interesting. Mm -hmm. It was a lovely, 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 lovely experience. Just one that helped cement my love for Mehrbaba and my understanding that he is God. He is our Christ. And well, that's a beautiful story. Yeah, thank you. 
Yeah, how fortunate for us that we had the Mondali. How fortunate we are. Jay Baba Melly, thanks for sharing it. Jay Baba, thank you for asking. I usually don't share that sort of story. I know. I'm you, glad you did. So thank you. You asked so point. You asked so pointedly. I thought maybe I was to tell her. Yeah, Melanie, thank you. I appreciate it too. It makes me understand why you would have invited me because you had had that experience. This is the first time I've heard it. And well, I've known I, Melanie I, here. I, I don't know that I, I can't recall if I had that experience at that. I can't. Uh, yeah, which came first, the chicken yeah. or the egg? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is really a beautiful experience. And um, well, I'm going to talk about experiences yeah you i know, just amazing experiences with mayor baba yes we so, do yeah. one of the things i really appreciate about melody is her <laughs> absolute conviction it's really amazing i'm sorry i'm getting choked up <laughs> it's all right elizabeth come on <laughs> all right we're gonna see what mihal has mihal Okay, actually, uh, Jay Papa, I came uh, to this program because I've never met Abby, and I only um, know him through um, through God's through uh, Lord Mayor and stories and all that. And and I'm uh, so I came to hear to hear, and um, what is so beautiful is that every Mandali that has a program, his energy comes in. <laughs> So every every program has this special energy of this person, and this one, um, Adi, uh, in in this program, people were uh, just um, so um, feeling with their feelings, strong feelings, and strong energy, and strong shares, and. Uh, and it comes together with his starting with you, Rusi, and um, with, uh, with with all of you and Cheryl. Wow, what she came out with, Ooh. you know, like that. And it's like Adi, you know, it's like Adi is is a spirit is here. And and also that we started talking with each other. You know, it doesn't didn't happen in other other pro, other other zooms. So. Um, so that is what I wanted to say, um, that his, he is present and uh, you can feel that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Michal. I think you've, I think you've voiced what a lot of us are feeling. And I didn't know, Karen, was there anything that you, anything else you had for us you wanted to bring? Um, the only thing that I remember, um, was that and and Mikhail, you know a lot and anybody please correct me that padre would go to the trust office when adi was there and pendu that they were all very close and on occasion i think between padre and adi they would have issues and they would be quite loud about it and then within the next minute they were calm and loving to each other and the who is the fourth pillar of Maribad? Vishnu. Were, right? Vishnu isn't Vishnu one. Is that right? Adi, Adi, Pendu, Padre, and Vishnu. That's all I have to share. And just like I think what Mikhail said, it is so wonderful. The energy is there. It's so wonderful to be able to share. The Mandali with all of us, Jay Bob, and thank everybody for your contributions. Actually, those you brought up, those you said, they all met Baba at the same time and they were all about the same age. So they all uh, yeah. came to Baba in Pune, and uh -huh. um, that's where he hooked them. And um, so uh, they, that's, that's maybe why they were so close and all of them were so strong. <laughs> Thank you also, Karen, for your beautiful, beautiful bios. I so enjoy them every time that you bring them. You go into those bios and you just bring out the treasures. So thank you. Bring it alive, doesn't she? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She brings it alive for us. 
Well, Ralph, I see your hand up. Jay Baba. Um, yeah, well, you know, you guys were talking about the four pillars and and who was it, Rosalie sharing that about Audrey and Adi. And I know that Pindu and Adi and my memory fails me which day of the week, but they met on a certain day every week, Pindu would go to Ahmed Nagar to the trust office, put on fresh, clean clothes and deck himself <laughs> out. And they could go and, and have his meeting with Adi, amongst other things that he did that day. And, and I th the few times I was there during those meetings, it was similar things. Sometimes you hear it get a little loud in Adi's office, you know. <laughs> and Pendu's voice, sort of like a walrus, you know, roaring in Adi. <laughs> I found it cute, but <clears throat> no telling what they were talking about. The problem business concerning, you know, the trust in Arabot, I have no idea. Yeah. <clears throat> I just thought I'd throw that in there. Thank Jay Baba. Uh, Jay Baba, Ralph, thank you. I know um, I was asking someone about uh, memories of the, um, of the men Mondali. And they also brought up the fact that they could be very uh, loud and they would be at each other. And then a minute later, you'd turn around and they'd be up there laughing. <laughs> so I think, you know, just pro, uh, problem, communication resolution. They show us how, you know, in Baba's love, we can have our opinions and express them and maybe even be a little bit firm in our expression, but that in the end, we realize that um, opinions are just that and that the only reality is Mayor Baba. And then you have to laugh that you're so stuck in your thing. Anyway, I just thought that we're so fortunate. I want to know if Marvin has anything to say. He knows so much about all these, all the people. Marvin, where are you? Marvin was looking at a <laughs> record. I think I saw him looking at a record album there for a minute. Go ahead, Marvin. What you got? You got something for us? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you don't know, but I never met uh, Adi or, uh, so I really can't, um, you know, tell you much besides what I've read, but. Is there anything in what you've read that has had an impact or is it just not necessarily like that? I think my internet went out for a second. <clears throat> yeah, there you are. Any, anyway, yeah, I was just uh, getting to my eBay activity over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing really to contribute to this uh, discussion, just uh, interested in hearing hearing it um yeah i understand he was such a lion i just see him as a lion with those eyebrows and that intensity of his love for baba just baba's lion i have to say one thing the lion and the lamb because <laughs> when i yeah. have my private my yeah. private talk when he stayed at uh, our house in Altadena, California. He told me not to be so hard on myself. And it's interesting because when he came, whatever year that was, a lot of people that weren't married, all of a sudden there were a lot of marriages. You know, it's like, yeah, there were a lot of marriages happening then. Beautiful. You, that's so true, Rosalie. That softening of the heart, he had that. He had that uh, that gift, that touch. Thank you, honey. That was beautiful. And yeah. it, what, it was interesting. I think I did read that Adi and yeah. Padre and Pendu and maybe Vishnu were all born in the same year. Oh, Baba. Huh. That is interesting. Yeah. Thanks. 
You remember the year, Marvin? 1904, I believe. 19, uh, Karen said 1903. Or maybe 03, yeah, I'm not sure 100%, yeah. All right, we'll go for 1903. And what about you, Bihan? 1903. All right. Year, year of the water rabbit. <laughs> water rabbit. Okay, what the, is a water rabbit, Rosalie? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Before we go down that rabbit hole, no pun intended. <laughs> Mihal, did you have something more about? Yeah, yeah. The, the heartbreaking, the heartbreaking. Baba you, was good at that too, too you know. So um, there was, I remember reading, there was a time, a long time, because because Adi was so close to Baba and working so close to Baba and so um, doing everything. And in the new life, he left him, he sent it back in order to be the organizer and um, the address and everything. So um, there was a time that I remember that he did not allow Adi to come to see him for a long time. So it was like that, what he did to Don, to Donkin, he did to, um, to Rano, he did too. To Baoji, uh, you know, there was a time that he just, um, um, and I think it was a bit before he, he he left the body. So I think he wanted, maybe he wanted to, for them. Um, Karen, you 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 know what? Yeah. No, you you muted. This is what I remember from when Adi spoke on the center in 1979. And Mikhail, you are absolutely correct in what you're saying. He said that there was a time and it was the most painful time for him that Baba would not allow him to see him. But then on the other hand, if I remember correctly, he also said that that was preparing him. Baba was preparing him for January 31st, 1969, for Baba's passing, that that in one way helped him to be able to accept it. And, and so there were two sides of the coin there. And yes, that I remember that from the talks because I think I went to each and every talk. So mm -hmm. we heard a lot. I just want to share. I have gave me the shares that you my said. My pictures of all the Montali, I can't, because of the way my computer works, I can't show everything. But in front of me are all the Montali pictures, but you can't see them. So I'm just going to show you the picture I have of Adi speaking at the Mayor Center oh, and the wow. meeting. What strength, wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, and that's where he did talk about that. That's my memory. So thank you, McCall, for bringing that up today, Bob. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, and another I thing that Baba. I want to say, yeah. I was just going to say what real quick. I liked his Baba um, pink pants in that photo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Can you awesome. show it one more time, Karen? Yes. Yeah. I have it right Maybe here. Maybe spotlight okay. it, Ruthie. So I, I did. I spotlighted it. Hold on. I'll spotlight it again. There we go. Sorry, I'm behind the... Now hold it's it up a little enough. higher, no, sweetheart. put it up, put it up. A little up higher, a little higher. Now. Yeah. 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 yeah, right, wow. 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 He really does look like a lion there. Wow. You can feel his energy. Yeah, strong. I also I have him. a blessed... I have a blessed picture of Bob, if you'd like to see that. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Right. They're all right here. This was a special gift from Nashua oh. when he came to stay with oh. us. Oh. This is and so beautiful. Oh. A little bit more Are toward down? your screen. It, the, there's too much light. Oh, yeah, good. Oh, oh, thank you, so Thank you, Charles. Beautiful. But wow. here's his, his signature. Yeah. Oh, wow. uh -huh. Who gave that to you, did you say? Nashuan. That is beautiful. Alavala, no, it's so beautiful. Oh my Who god. Is Baba? Who is he seated with, uh, Karen? Oh, was... You know, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I've had this for so many years, and but I don't know. I wonder if it's one of the schools, you know, one of the school, the boys' schools or something. 
I'll say, I'll ask Nashua, I guess, and we'll find out if he knows. Well, I I'm wanted to gonna, mention another gonna... thing, please. Uh, okay, go ahead, Mihal. Yeah, um, that I have um, helped Etzion uh, typing um, Carrie Ben um, um letters to the trust, and she was in contact with Adi, and Adi used to be a contact person for her. He used to be the go-between um, Merazad people and uh, go between uh, all the um, literature, the Baba literature that she tried to um, to um, bring to Israel and did and did bring to Israel. Adi was very patient with her, and and he so uh, he knew how to handle, um, and that's why Baba put him as uh, the contact person, and and I'm thankful for him. Yes, he was the secretary. Yeah. So Oh, that's who people went through. How how wonderful, Michal. I didn't know that. Thank you so much. Such a beautiful story. Well, how about if we take a moment of silence together? And I want to just thank everyone thank you. for their time with us this morning. And most especially, um, Meher Baba. The words. <laughs> I hear laughter. All right, let's have a moment of silence. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. I just want to thank everyone for their heartfelt shares and bringing Adi to us today. Thank you. Avatar, Meher Baba. Thank you. Avatar, Meher Baba. DJ. Avatar, Meher Baba. DJ. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. That, that was the most wonderful meeting. Thank you, everybody. Oh, just. Excellent. Thank you.